<clears throat> Let's uh, see who's here first. Um, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's August 10th, 2011, and we are gathering together to talk about various things, and mainly I think about how to connect with each other this fall, using youth voices, but also kind of building a community here together. Um, the uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Burt, why don't we start with you? Because uh, you, you, you have sort of a different agenda here. But uh, introduce yourself briefly, and then because I think it'll give us an interesting context for our other conversation too. What do you do, Ronnie? Welcome. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, I work with EduBlogs, and in that role, I write a lot with EduBlogger and manage. Our help manage our student challenges and teacher challenges, which are uh, the teacher challenges, professional development online for teachers, and the student challenges is kind of a, a way of connecting students and teachers in classrooms all over the world and writing together. And uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in addition to that, I've been a teacher, a middle school and high school teacher for six years before that, um, until about a year, year and a half ago. And so uh, I still like to keep one foot in the classroom as much as possible and, and keeping on top of those things as well. Cool. So welcome. And part of the reason we contacted you is because we're trying to figure out how to connect with your community. Like we have this mm -hmm. community called youthvoices.net. Mm -hmm. And we'd love for teachers who have edge blogs to find our students and for our students to find those students. So, if you Excellent. can keep that yeah, as one of our goals here, that that'd be great. And through our student challenges, we uh, you know we connect across all platforms, not even blogs, wikis, everywhere. You know, that's that's kind of I think we share a very similar and common goal. So, sounds great. Good. So help us keep thinking about that. Um, I'm just going to come across the screen here, Margaret. Welcome. Yeah. Nice to see you. We've been talking for. You about a year now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, introduce yourself briefly and tell us where you've been recently. Okay. Um, I'm Margaret Simon. I live in South Louisiana and um, recently I attended the Microsoft Innovative Education Forum in Seattle, which was quite incredible. Because but I couldn't have done it without you guys. So, because you um, were an innovative educator, right? Well, with the help of some friends, I did. No, of course. Yeah. So, cool. um, I'm enjoying. You know, I'm looking forward to sharing that experience with you all again, and um, and getting my kids back involved with the youth voices. I'm excited about that. Right. So, one of the things we're talking about is moving from voices on the golf to youth voices. But this year, and your your students are second through sixth grade again, or. Yes, I'll have second through sixth graders, and they're all gifted kids, um, small groups, small area, but um, they're all eager to to do this kind of project. Project-based learning is the only way to go with gifted kids, so I've been doing a lot of that. Well, welcome. Kevin, we finally got you on. You're a busy guy with your band and everything, you know, i got to tell you. But anyway... <laughs> There have been some performances on these Hangouts. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that yet, no. Oh, yeah, 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 first yeah, Hangout, yeah. so. Oh, yeah, there, some musicians are using this as a platform for getting music out and performing. It's oh. kind of neat. Oh. All right, so we're going to take Kevin cool. Band on soon. All right, okay. introduce yourself, Kevin. Uh, well, I'm Kevin Hodgson, and I teach sixth grade out in western Massachusetts, and i um, yeah, my, my uh, students were part of the Voices on the Gulf last year as well, and um, I'm trying to figure out a way to you know, shift gears, I think, uh, and move over to the, the bigger network, and um, kind of how to make that happen with, you know, 80 or 85 sixth graders. Um, and, and, but I'm um, interested, and it's great seeing all these different people who were part of last year and other projects, too. So that's great to be here. And I don't know if your screen looks the same as mine, but I think we're up to Judy Jester next, all right? Yes. Judy, Hi. introduce I'm, yourself, I'm, please. I'm Judy Jester, and I'm with the Pennsylvania Writing and Literature Project, and I teach eighth grade in um, 
Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour southwest of Philadelphia. Um, I'm brand new to Youth Voices and to Google Plus, and my site is yeah, relatively new to NWP Makes. We just received our grant and are making great plans to put it into place. Our first event is September 10th, so I'm a newbie in every way here. You're welcome. And you teach eighth graders, is that right? I do. I do, and I um, work with our summer institute as well. What subject do you teach? Eighth grade English. It's English. Okay. Welcome. And Gail Desler, welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Gail, you're one of the people who helped us, or helped right now, is helping us connect with edubloggers. But uh, what else do you have in mind out there? And introduce yourself briefly. Okay, so I'm uh, Gail, I'm in California, and I um, work for a school district in the Sacramento area, the Elk Grove School District. So although I don't have my own class, I actually work with teachers in kindergarten through 12th grade. And I'm really looking forward to connecting the um, more the elementary uh, kids into the Youth Voices community uh, this year. Cool. Are yeah, yeah, with Kevin and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> reconnecting with Kevin and uh, with Margaret too. Yep. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm hoping middle school three too. of you yeah. <laughs> create some sort of, uh, I don't know, core that makes that happen. Um, great. But Dan, welcome as well. Thank you. Well, Introduce I'm Dan yourself. Always. Yeah. Good, good to be here. <laughs> um, I teach in uh, Boyne City, Michigan, and... Uh, I work with the local uh, writing project, the Red Cedar Writing Project, uh, our satellite site in uh, northern Michigan, and um, just love being a part of NWP and uh, the opportunities to connect and collaborate. And, uh, so, yeah. and Dan, you teach in sixth grade, is that right? Yes, yeah, sixth grade uh, English language arts. Welcome. And Chris Sloan, you're next on my list here. Okay. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach in Salt Lake City, Utah. I teach uh, English and media to high school students, and uh, I, of course, am looking forward to getting back working with everyone because you know my students really do get a lot out of all these collaborations, and uh, so we start on the twenty second. So next week is our kind of back to school, or you know, like those pre meetings. So yeah. I'm, I'm now starting to think about how this is all going to fit together. I think Margaret beats you there. I think you, you have students yeah, coming on Friday. Yeah, we start Friday. Yes, <laughs> oh, wow. That was impressive. Yeah, yeah we've, we've been having teacher meetings all week. So. Oh. Charlie Frege, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Charlie Frege. I, I teach in, in Canarsie, Brooklyn, which is... Uh, in uh, East uh, New York, and uh, it's a transfer school. So our population are 16 to 21 year olds who have dropped out or uh, you know uh, were significantly absent in their previous schools, and so are just re-entering the school system. Uh, I teach English and media. Chris, I believe we actually shared a show last year. I, I believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was your student who did the fantastic um, not pages? Uh, the 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 Mac uh, Excel art. Oh right, yeah, he did a lot of infographics. Yeah, infographics yeah. on the thing. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Ch Charlie, can can you say a little more oh. about? Uh, you guys are in technology what school we're doing? some sort. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. Go <laughs> and also, uh, also, I think I, it, I, if I you can also say a little bit about. about Sorry, if you could also say a little bit about um, how, how your students use Youth Voices, that would be a good way to kick us off, I think, here. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I really sort of took the approach of uh, really trying to engage students in order to deal with writing. So most of my English class, uh, in a class that I call, just for lack of a better title, 21st Century Writing, uh, is self-directed. So we really take that first uh, assignment on Youth Voices, the 10 self and 10 world mm -hmm. questions, and really try and make that the backbone of the course. 
So students are continually reading up on topics that are interesting to them, are following things on Google Reader, and are writing short sort of blogs that they then, <clears throat> towards the end of the course, revisit to revise and add in all the various college elements like MLA and uh, more proper bibliographies and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we spend a lot of time on Youth Voices. Yeah. It's a good issue of how fast to get kids to post and then how to get them to go back and keep improving over time. It, it, it's definitely hard. Uh, you know, one of the things that we really try and I try and stress to them is that writers always need an audience, just like a musician. And mm -hmm. so that's, it, it gives them a, a chance to practice uh, with mm -hmm. something on the line. Okay. And we did have one more introduction um, <laughs> over here. Um, Adam, welcome. Uh, welcome. Uh, thanks. Uh, I teach in Dallas, Texas, a uh, private school uh, where I do high school biology and environmental science, but I also have a private business that teaches aquaponics and urban farming. So, right. tell, Go ahead and tell us more here. about that. We've been, we've been, you hung out with us last week, no, 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 hang up, but <laughs> on Skype, and you're here mm -hmm. with us again. Uh, how did you get involved in hydroponics? What is hydroponics? Just kind of introduce well, that for us, and then we'll get back to Youth Voices. Okay. Yeah. What I actually do is uh, aquaponics. It's the combination okay. of aquaculture and hydroponics. So it's completely organic in its nature, and what it does is it actually uses, uses the fish waste as the nutrient source for the plants. Okay. It's been utilized in pretty much every environment from... Uh, Uganda and Kenya to Central Australia, uh, India, all over the U.S. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, and you're imagining to do that with students this year? Hopefully, uh, I'm <laughs> currently in the negotiation process with my school to get space, um, but. Mm. I have a test system in my classroom, and last year in a 10 foot by 10 foot space in my classroom, I raised 30 pounds of rainbow trout and enough salad for myself to have a meal three days a week. Wow. Nice. Nice. Cool. So, Adam, tell us a little bit about why you do this and why you think students might do this. Give us that um, for a second, and then see if you can figure out how they might also participate in a school-based social network like Youth Voices within that? <laughs> well, uh, my interest in this, uh, I went to Texas A&M and I just got a real desire to help communities, help my community from that. From there, I, I started working at schools that had very developed community service programs, trying to give back. and. And then I found my personal hero in Will Allen, uh, up at Growing Power in Milwaukee, who mm -hmm. has been doing aquaponics and urban farming for almost, uh, well, over 20 years in, in Milwaukee. And I've gotten very fired up about it in the last three years since my son was born, and <laughs> I want to do a lot to make the world a better place for him. So it's kind of my new crusade. And just to link that back to um, some of the shows we've done, we had, um, remember Anna, I forget how to say her last name, the woman who produced uh, Fresh? Mm -hmm. She was on talking to us last spring, I think, maybe last winter, and, and Will Allen is featured in that film. He's probably featured in a lot of other things. Right. Right. He's, actually, he's a prominent feature in Fresh. He's also in Food, Inc., and many, many other food-related movies. So I don't know how to organize this. It's a lot of people, and we're all looking at each other. So, so please jump in, to, you know, as, you, as you're thinking. But Ronnie, can I throw it to you? Um, if, if we have a bunch of student gardeners in NR, and there are some people who might have been trying to get in here tonight who are in um, the do-it-yourself uh, DIY, is that the right? Uh, 
National Writing Project um, work. Fred uh, Midland um, and others are doing some farming uh, work in gardens, school gardens. Matt Montaigne is uh, going to start doing some gardening too. How could we pull gardeners together? <laughs> Anybody sure. can answer that. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, one way is that we found and that we've seen is uh, a lot of success in like a Twitter hashtag with everything that gets done and links and following that, or on a blog um, or on a website putting a uh, a widget that has a feed of either Twitter hashtag or other tags. Or, you, know, you can set up a bunch of sites with RSS feeds into one, so that you kind of have a hub, one place to go to kind of see what's happening. Um, that's just one idea. I'll, I'll keep thinking and see if anyone else has, has something else as well. May I interrupt for a minute? Go Is ahead, everyone go. here involved in, in, in NWP Makes? I've what's never an heard NWP of Makes? What, what is that? <laughs> uh, that's what Paul was referring to as the DIY, the do-it-yourself. Oh. Is that uh, just one part of the conversation? Yes, go ahead. Why, why don't you represent that? Fred was supposed oh, to be there. I don't know where he is. <laughs> yes, uh, but go ahead. Explain that project because that is part of what we're about here. Because we're trying to figure out how to get the the that group of teachers onto youth voices. So what okay. is um, the mix? <laughs> so I, as I said, uh, my site uh, just um, jumped on board with that. There have been other sites that have been working on it and. Um, Christina will have to. Christina Cantrell from NWP She's is in on the, the chat room, yeah. live stream. She'll have to uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. But basically, it is uh, the idea of having teachers and students try making things, and then um, looking at the writing that results from creating these things, whether it's something like gardening or creating robots or artwork or something of that sort, and then looking at how that might inform their um, technical writing. Um, or other forms of writing as well. Um, and as I said, my site, is, we're just taking off with it. So we haven't, uh, we don't have the history that some other sites have. And Christina is saying on the live stream, there are six sites already. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, um, so one of the things we're trying to figure out tonight is how we might use Youth Voices to help us along with that. I'm sorry, uh, Ronnie, if you were onto that. something okay. else, go, go right back to what you were saying. I, I didn't no, mean to okay. pause the conversation. You did. Did anyone, um, if I can uh, jump no, in here, did anyone play um, um, the game about saving the world? Um, Evoke. It was called, uh, you were, Paul, you were playing this in your class a lot. I yeah, didn't play it this last year. Uh, Evoke, exactly. Uh, when I think about Evoke, and I only played it with my classes that that first season. I didn't I didn't do it this last year. Uh, it was about sort of taking on these challenges and then reporting back. Uh, I think it might be an interesting thing if in different places people are growing something or they are gardening and they are sharing their. They couldn't really share the products of what they. Eat. Well, I suppose you could you could mail vegetables, but uh, other than that, you could post you know your crop. Yields in a lots of photographs, location. lots of video work you could lots do. Of photographs, videos. videos. Well, I, and you know, a challenge for me is how do I work that into um, my classroom? Um, and and I think a, one way that I'm thinking about uh, incorporating that is to think about just where our food comes from, and to have students uh, read and write about that, um, which seems to me a lot more accessible right away. Um, although I really like Adam's, you know, your business and the way you incorporate aquaponics yeah, into right. your teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's like a, a long-term goal, but, you know, by, you know, 10 days from now, I don't know if I'll have something in place to, you know, work that into the curriculum. So I'm trying to think of a way to incorporate those ideas. And I think for me, just having uh, some students, maybe not all, uh, some of them take on the project of trying to describe where food comes from and 
and what are the pros and cons of those things. And I think everybody can do that, you know, in their classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, well, Chris, so that's if, a start. if I could jump in there real quick. Um, it's actually really easy to do DIY projects involving growing fish, growing plants in your classroom. Uh, there's a website, I'll put up a, a, a stream post about it when we get done with this, but they're called Window Farms, windowfarms.org, and their whole thing is using water bottles and Coke bottles and so forth uh, hooked together and you grow plants in that in the window of your classroom um, or the window of your home. Uh, and their entire thing has been cr uh, crowdsourced DIY projects. Personally, with my classes, I'm not looking to do any large-scale projects. I'm looking to do, here's the goal. I want you to take these seeds and plant them and observe what happens and how long it takes to grow and kind of develop a body of knowledge as we go on, hopefully even carrying that from year to year. So it doesn't have to be a large, uh, massive-scale project to begin with. But that's interesting because you do have this whole business that is a major project that they could lead to. How do you kind of keep both of those? <laughs> um, well, the truth is, is the reason I have a commercial business right now mm -hmm. is because, frankly, it takes far too long and too much money to set up a nonprofit. Um, mm -hmm. the, the simple truth is, is that for 50 bucks and about an hour and a half of my time, I set up a, uh, a for-profit corporation. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it would take close to six to eight thousand dollars and at least six to twelve months of my time if I wanted to set up the same thing as a non-profit. So, mm -hmm. but let, me, let me ask that question ago. I, I mean, I, I really get the idea of starting small, but you do have big ideas for the students or what they might be able to do eventually. Oh, I, get, I guess I misunderstood. misunderstood that. That's okay. Um, I guess the goal is for them to realize that anyone can do as much or as little as they, as they choose to. And the first step in doing something big is to realize that you just have to get out there and do it. So I would like to provide a place in my area, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, that allows the average individual to learn useful skills that will be marketable and not just a college degree. We don't. Mm -hmm. We need less degrees and more people with skills that are actually useful. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, Judy, what is your writing project doing, or what DIY projects do you imagine doing yourself? Even if they're small beginnings? <laughs> Judy, you look like you've muted. <laughs> I did, sorry. There you go. <laughs> um, so we have a launch on September 10th, a, mm -hmm. a mini version of um, the NWP Makes uh, Initiative um, that, we, that was held in November. Um, and what basically will happen is that teachers will come into the room and there will be several different um, stations for them to go to and they can choose from creating something um, in about a half an hour's time. Um, you know, whether they make some little food or make a terrarium, I think I'm going to um, teach people how to make origami yodas, uh, just something so they can try their hand at something with which they may not already be familiar. And then we have a series of different writing prompts that we'd like them to um, respond to and then reflect on what was that experience like. Um, for teachers who don't run screaming out of the room, um, we'll invite them then to um, think about how they might uh, implement something similar in their classroom, trying on one or two projects during the course of the school year with their students where the kids make something and then do some residing, writing as a result of it. Mm -hmm. um, and have you imagined this in your classroom yet? Your Pardon me? Have you imagined this with your eighth graders yet? 
Um, yeah, I already do some things with my eighth mm -hmm. graders, um, so I'm looking, thinking um, of things that I, uh, you know, something new I might attempt. Um, we already do some origami um, work in the very beginning of the year just to see if they can follow directions. Um, String figures are really fun as well. I do those with my students. String figures, can you yeah, talk a little bit more about like, that? Like a cat's cradle, um, you know, the various sort of Jacob's Ladder, the various sort of puzzles that come off of uh, strings. Oh, OK. Uh, it's so just another way of following directions, and it's just one string instead of like ruining various pieces of paper that get a little destroyed. Right. Exactly. That a single six foot piece of string uh, can be sort of reused from class to class. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. Um, I do have my students do some writing um, with the origami boxes they create, um, but not in the way that I think that um, NWP had imagined looking at writing in terms of uh, being more technical in nature. So I need to think some more about that. Um, and I'm looking for. Um, some folks who've been involved in, in the past um, to, to give us some good leads. There is a, a forum, um, I think it's the 17th, Christina will correct me if I'm wrong, um, it's a New York City Makers Fair and I know my team is heading up there to check out what they have going on there as well. Cool. The, uh, Gail, Dessler, do you, are, will you be working with the teachers done all that gardening again this year and is there any way we can get her <laughs> involved with us I know it's tough there's so many things going on but yeah well yeah we can't hear you there you go there sorry yeah <laughs> she, this teacher okay this is a teacher that um, just went crazy with the woolly garden thing so um, and it was one of those things, um, we got a couple of grants, so she's got a, she has Woolly Garden going in the kindergarten area and outside of her fourth and fifth grade area. And she's got a butterfly garden going now too and is starting to move on to a native uh, plant. So, you know, the, the aquaponics and um, the window gardens, I mean, I'm getting <laughs> pretty excited about this because, um, you know, this is a teacher that, this is a Title I site so you know typically it's hard for um, you know you don't have fresh produce really very um, accessible in the in these areas mm -hmm. lots of Which fast is what it's about. Food, it's, not it's about going back to what Chris said it's about kids understanding food where their food comes from what they eat mm -hmm. that kind of thing um, but also, I'm going to try to make connections with, you know, what's going on in the Horn of Africa um, and, you know, Somalia and so forth. So, like, looking at food insecurity in other places at the same time, which brings me around to <laughs> where, where I hope some of this goes. And, um, Ronnie, one of the things that we've done on Youth Voices is we've created channels. And one of our channels is called uh, Local Knowledge, Global Attitude. And I hope it's about gardening. I hope it's about um, doing stuff out in the community, um, I, I guess. And then, you know, Margaret, the, um, it's right on the front page of Youth Voices right now. The, the piece that you did, if you could describe that, because that gets at some of the local stuff to the Main Street project that you guys did on uh, VoiceThread. Yeah. And I want to well, get did. to everybody saying like what, what your plans are at the beginning yeah. and see if we can start making some connections. Yeah, well last year we did, we had a group of sixth graders that we met with monthly and we, um, we actually built a city, a box city, but as part of that project they re researched our main street and we took pictures we went on a field trip took pictures and then from those pictures they had to find information about the things um, the things that they took pictures of and that was quite an incredible challenge didn't realize there was so little information out there and so sometimes we just had to call people on the phone you know that we knew because 
he knew this person had this shop at one time, and so maybe they would know something about the tiles that were on the floor, you know, things like that. And then they created a creative nonfiction writing about that, and then recorded that in the voice thread. And so our, our kind of our service project for the whole year of working with the sixth grade group, this was all our sixth graders, all our sixth grade gifted kids in the parish. And the, t the culmination of that was this voice thread. And um, this year I'm really excited because I've gotten inspired by being in Seattle and seeing their sculpture garden. And I've already gotten permission from the city. There's a slab they have um, created over a... Um, it had been a gas station at one time. And so there's toxins in the ground. And they're doing this project where they're planting trees you know, to pull out the toxins out of the soil, and they've put a concrete cement. <laughs> so that's that, you know, and of course we haven't started meeting yet, so I don't know what the kids will come up with, but um, I'm really excited about doing the same kind of work again where the whole group gets together and does a community project. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? Any questions? <laughs> I think that sounds like a really neat project, and if you're thinking of how could Youth Voices facilitate this, if you're thinking about creating channels, so I could see one for gardening, one for photography, maybe another one for social action, which sounds like what her project might be evolving into. Um, mm -hmm. I, want, I, I posted on the chat, what else are folks doing? It sounds like there's a lot of gardening going on. What else have people done in terms of do-it-yourself? With their students. I like the idea of there being a community, um, not so much a challenge, but a community place for us to go that students can share their their action, their social action that they're they're doing in their area. You know, that would be um, you know a great place for them to say, "Hey, look, this this is what we're doing, but what are you guys doing? And what you know, what can we do?" Um, to help you and to share that in that enthusiasm and we can do that with photography um, you know chats like this you know that kind of thing so I, I know that for my students who are very at small groups and they're very isolated that it's just a wonderful thing for them to be able to share with other students around the around the United States that voice thread when I've played it for other teachers they've really loved it and I I love listening to those kids talk about their Main Street but I'm not sure they got a lot of response did they to that you know I haven't seen any response but like I, it, it was kind of the end of the year and right. so we haven't um, we haven't accessed it since then you know um, so well, you see some of the same kids, or have they moved on to seventh grade? No, they've moved on to seventh grade, so they'll be in middle uh -huh. school. Okay. But they can always come back and look if you see them somewhere. <laughs> you can show them. Yeah. But yeah. but more important, I'm, I'm trying to figure out for myself when I think about the year, I'm trying to figure out how to get kids to post more often shorter pieces, um, descriptions of the project as they're working on it not necessarily just the final project the product you know final product so any thoughts about that like can you imagine those sixth graders posting more often about you know I took this picture and I'm calling this guy up I don't know you know and much more about it yet and then getting some feedback on that from people well, that, that would be great. I, you know, I think that would be, be um, really valuable to them to be able to do that. One of the things that's been um, frustrating for me is that there's not, um, uh, you know, like sometimes if you post to a forum site, then you get an email and it says there's this post and you go and you look at it you know, Facebook sends you an alert, <laughs> you know, how is there a way that we can somehow know that somebody's looking at what we're putting up there, other than just checking back and finding the comments and things like that. I don't, I don't know if there's a way to connect us that way. So an alert system connected to the email would be one way, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's high on the list of things to work with, with Bill Fitzgerald. So I'll... 
ask for that again. <laughs> um, but um, having Tom kids learn how to, how to use their um, members page is, is another answer to that. There, there is an interesting members page that collects any responses that, um, uh -huh. that are there. So we need to learn how to use that better too. Yeah. So mm. kind of both ways. Other thoughts? Go ahead. I like your idea, Paul, about um, like how, how do you work in a system of students, you know, slowly progressing to the bigger project and sharing out as they go and getting feedback and um, that's something really to think about, I think, that, um, you know, I guess when I talk about the um, well, last year in the film of Voice in the Gulf with my students, we did kind of think of it as like a final publishing site of here we are publishing to the world kind of thing, not the incremental things that we reflected in, in classroom. And um, I guess the question is what happens when you take that kind of incremental stuff into a public space, right? And students yeah. and what how do they try to do? It? Last year was, uh, you know, I still teach a traditional research paper uh, in my AP class, uh, but I had them uh, do weekly postings about where they were with the uh, the topic as it progressed. I think we took maybe five weeks or thereabouts. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was interesting uh, to see how things developed anyway. And what started to happen is that, that sorry. sorry, I just went, one, what started to happen is that your students and my students started to develop topics together. So they mm -hmm. saw, oh, you're working on that. I wrote a paper mm -hmm. about this. You know, so th there was some connection that happened, I think. Mm -hmm. It wasn't perfect, but it started to do that. Mm -hmm. But Charlie, you were going to say something? Well, in, in order to get students to, to post more in the, in the previous incarnation of the website, uh, you were able to do a lot more inside of the group of your school. Uh, sort of, uh, that seems to have been removed. I don't know if it's coming back. Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I was able to uh, create these wikis, and then students could publish the smaller uh, works in progress there, and then mm -hmm. once those were ready, they would then post it on their blog. And mm -hmm. that was how they sort of went through that process. So they had that safety net of just, okay, it's just the people in the room with me who are commenting on my work. Uh, but uh, in bringing them in to, you know, bringing the community and making connections together, uh, the thing that I struggle with most is finding those issues that they are uh, that are engaging for them. Uh, it, it seems like the the lives that are my students lead are a bit more complicated than would seemingly allow them to invest interest in what's going on in um, in the Horn of Africa. Uh, there are moments we have a large Haitian population, so when the earthquake happened we were able to generate a lot of stuff then, but it's sort of hit or miss when you try and like connect to the Gulf. When I tried to steer people there, it really didn't take. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's a struggle that I find a lot in this, in this process. It sounded earlier, Paul, like you were looking for um, students to use this sort of the way that the um, TCs, the new TCs and the Institute would use e-anthology where they would post a question that they wanted help with, a, a resource or something, not necessarily a piece that they wanted, um, you know, a, a bless or press, although certainly that was a valuable tool for them. But, uh, you know, when someone wanted to know more about how to confer, they might, you know, say, can someone give me a great book on conferring with third graders or something of that sort? Is that the kind of thing that you are looking for to say uh, if a kid is doing a, a project around photography and they want to ask questions about aperture or something and maybe no one else at their school is doing photography, they could ask someone else across the country? Sounds right. Yeah. And, okay. and what happens, unfortunately, is that things get lost pretty fast. Like, a lot of kids don't get response to things. And I think part of the answer is to have these smaller communities where they, they can find each other. And part of the answer is to have similar projects, missions, we're calling them, that kids can work on so that, so that a student in my class knows that they're working on a similar mission. They're working on a gardening mission. And Fred's kids out 
in in California are working on a gardening mission also, so they can kind of share where they are in the process a little bit. So I think that's what we're trying to do, if that makes some sense. It does. Uh, but but and and what Charlie and if I could think about what Charlie's kids were, you know, most successful in getting connection with, it's it's all around their individual inquiries. Um, mm -hmm. And that's exciting, but it's hard to build community. <laughs> so th yes. that's what's that's what's mm. the paradox in some way. <laughs> Anybody who hasn't spoken, any thoughts you've been sitting on? I'd like to speak to that. Um, I, I'm just kind of thinking about how um, youth voices, how voices on the Gulf worked for my students last year. Mm -hmm. And as a publication site, it worked beautifully because it was a, an authentic um, place for them to post their work and it wasn't just me looking at it. There were other people looking at it and there was a, it was a different level. They, you know, they wanted to produce something that was going to be a much better product. And I, I don't want to lose that. I don't know if if having the more casual conversations going on would you know diminish the work in a way. I'm I'm just asking the question. I don't know. Anybody have I, any I think that's a good point yeah. that yeah. that you raise and um, I think that's the balance of you know like the reflective writing versus the publishing writing and kind of where those all fit. Um, and I think we use the Voice in the Gulf kind of the same way, which is a publishing site. At least that's how kind of we used it. Um, and that was a lot of motivation for my students and the things they were creating to know that they were going to a site where um, not just of the students but the world potentially could see what they were doing. Um, so I, I guess I'm kind of grappling too. And I, I, mean, I like Paul's thought. I'm trying to think about how, how that would work. and. Um, that idea of the, the earlier iteration of youth voices where you had communities within communities that you could do more of that safer, early reflective writing kind of makes sense, I think, on, on some level. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? Questions? You hear that, Paul? Bring it back. So that you want to be able to publish just to your the folks in your school? Uh, well, I was able to sort of group them all. Yeah, they were all together in one, uh, you know, that homepage for your the group, my East Brooklyn uh -huh. group. It just uh, gave a way for everyone to sort of track what everyone was doing in yeah. within that one connection. And, uh, yeah, for a while there, I actually ran the entire class out of there. Like, the days, mm -hmm. names, and everything all just was inside of that. So having, having school or class homepages feels like an important thing to have. I hear you. <laughs> well, I, it, 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 the, yeah. the more useful thing was that it could be a, a for the smaller writing assignments where everyone in the class was doing the same one and they were able to quickly mm -hmm. read and comment on each other's work was, mm -hmm. was a nice, invaluable resource. <laughs> If, um, if I could interrupt, um, Go ahead. Fred had posted on live stream that he wanted someone with a mic to bring up um, the idea of genre, um, and he was talking about um, some work they did with um, third graders looking at the um, the genres on the back of seed packets and then try writing their own, you know, persuasive, informational, descriptive, etc. Um, in the work that you all have done so far. How has uh, the lens of genre played into what you've done with your students? <laughs> I'll, I'll just interject just from the voices on the Gulf. Um, it was um, it was great because we worked within lots of genre. I mean, we worked with poetry. We did um, you know nonfiction pieces. We did a you know math project. We did a um, a project with. Um, <coughs> students commenting on, you know, doing a voice thread on pictures of um, the Gulf oil spill that we had been given uh, by 
the director of Homeland Security in our area. Wow. So, um, so we did lots of different types of genre with the just the topic of the Gulf oil spill. Um, and we and I had a student do a fiction piece um, that got a lot of uh, you know a lot of comments. She felt very famous. So um, yeah. So I think you know I, that's what I love about this about the the mm -hmm. forum is that you can you can do everything really. Well said. And what I think we're striving for is to get more students to become famous the way that young you know, mm -hmm. that author did uh, on that piece um, you know I don't want to use publishing either um, so I like that I like that you've emphasized that but I'm just wondering if we can't learn from yeah. game design that our assignments are like the accomplishments need to happen faster um, and so kids can get response to their work quicker if that makes some sense mm -hmm. is it Dan are you trying to get in here I'm in now um, <laughs> I, I believe I'm in right now <laughs> yeah hi this is Hi, this has been nice thinking? for me. <laughs> well, honestly, I've, you know, because I'm sort of new to the uh, the voice, youth voices, I'm uh, listening and, and picking up a lot of ideas. Uh, we do a project early in the year. Um, it's a, I call it the, it's a Barry Lane uh, essay, and it's uh, What Bugs Me essay. And they basically pick a local issue, national issue, or an international issue that they're, you know, sort of uh, compelled and motivated to write about. And then um, they write a letter to the local editor of the newspaper. But I've always been kind of, you know, and we've had kids get published, but I, the audience is, is northern Michigan. And I'd like to, uh, this was compelling to me, just the opportunity to have a greater audience with a, a bigger uh, spectrum. Um, so... I've, I've appreciated all the, the ideas and uh, just kind of been listening and uh, picking up cool. ideas. And I like, uh, you know, I, Youth Voices sounds like it's, uh, to me, a lot like e-anthology. And I've kind of, since the first year I went through the writing project, been looking for something that would uh, would be similar to that. So, um, And I, I teach sixth grade, so I'm a sixth you know. grade teacher. What makes the anthology work is the community of people who respond to each other and make sure that everybody gets responses, right? I mean, it's yeah. whatever, you know, whatever advantages it has. That's, I think that it's the community, and that's why we need to be that community in some way. We need to make sure that kids get responses. There's far too much that goes up on Youth Voices that doesn't get connected to, doesn't get responses. In some way. Yeah, Paul. Well, can, can uh, oh, go ahead. I was just going to suggest, you know, is there a way to, like, deputize kids to be part of, like, the E anthology has an E team, right? And their task is to make sure every piece of writing gets response. So there's mm -hmm. no piece of writing on the E anthology network for the writing project that I think goes unnoticed. Yeah. And I wonder if there's a way to hours. create a team of students that can kind of be doing monitoring, kind of doing some of the same thing. And I don't know how. That, like that would formulate, but um, I think that could be a powerful experience though, for people. So they're not posting into the void. Um, one of the things I, you know, originally I was um, all about the publishing too with the kids, you know, um, and there, there is definitely a power to that, but um, I found more and more that the comments uh, that are developing on a lot of these posts are actually richer than the original post. So what I'm, in the past, I had students um, post once a week and then comment once a week. And I think this year I'm going to have them comment twice as much as they post and just see where that goes. Because I think having them in the habit of, like Kevin's idea is great, you know, have people whose roles are commenters. Because some students I think that would appeal to. But I think also what I'm thinking is I'm going to bump up the required number of comments and see how that goes. 
That's similar to what I'm going to be doing with my environmental science class this year, Chris. I'm going to require them to write one post a semester, but I'm going to, I'm going to basically grade them on their level of response to each other's posts. So if they get an average of two posts per class day for the semester, then that will be an A range. Less than that, it will go down. But I like your idea of increasing the number of, of comments from them because you're right that they comment much more richly a lot of times on each other's writing. You know, Can earlier... Just, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. I was going to say, earlier in the chat stream, I saw someone mentioning the Common Core standards. And I feel like uh, in New York, we have a standard that is in the English standards, and it's in a lot of them, related to using appropriate language when, when communicating with diverse audiences. And I feel like that <laughs> is also in the Common Core ones. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, at my school, that's actually that's how we grade, is by these standards. We do outcomes-based grading. Uh, so uh, that's that's how I get my kids to do it. I, they have to do anytime they post one of their own, they have to comment on two non East Brooklyn students. Mm -hmm. uh, and I kind of nudge them to schools that I know will, will respond back in kind. I will nudge them to call school or I'll nudge them to other schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things I do, Charlie, when your students were coming to the end of some marking period or something, there was a lot of posting happening, <laughs> and and so I printed all of those out, you know, three three or four times, and then just sort of decorated my room with them, and they came in and had to take down two to respond to. Um, so, oh, well, that's a know, great idea. And, and so Susan Enheim who's over there in the chat room, does much nicer invitations to kids, but I but I think we need to be thinking about these things. Kevin, and I want to get back to the idea of there being a team of kids who are making sure that everything gets a response. That's a very specific thing rather than saying, you know, maybe you'll go on and respond. <laughs> so I like that. Um, and I'm wondering if, if people can take on the channel leadership and think about it in terms of organizing kids in my class and then so there there is a channel for the elementary school right the the K through 6 kids so I don't want to give everybody more jobs <laughs> but that's one way to think about it is is that you're paying attention to that channel whatever gets published in that channel you want to make sure the kids in your class respond to it and if you know you're working on something you can't do that you contact Gail and she makes sure whatever and so I think that there is a way to organize around the channels that way <laughs> and it fall and yeah and it would yeah. fall to us to kind of nurture that I think and I think right. Chris made the right point that I mean I know in the past I've had students that if I said would you like to take on this idea that they would love that you know not uh -huh. all of them would but there's a certain contingent that um, loves that interaction um, you know, our thing too is, um, you know, time on computers is, you know, when do we have the computers and how often can we get on there to do these kind of things and um, so, you know, trying to balance us out is, is another part of it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Ronnie, I wanted to get back to you a second. You've been patiently listening there. Any thoughts? Um, do you guys in the Edge Blogger community have these questions too about how do you get more response on different blogs? I think you must. I think I hear you guys talking about that. Yeah. No, uh, uh, absolutely. No, it's it's uh it's been very interesting listening because it's, it's the same same exact conversations that that we have on a daily basis and uh, you know, but hearing about these exciting projects and seeing see putting faces to some of the projects that I've heard about is pretty exciting as well. <laughs> um, but in terms of commenting uh, we, s we have lots of examples and showing examples of really starting out slow, maybe just starting out with comments and, and really teaching what is a substantial comment or a good comment or a quality comment. And uh, I think you mentioned, you know, making it kind of game-based. You know, we have mm. lots of great examples where 
they kind of, especially with the younger students, but, but at all ages, you know, we have a badge or, or some sort of thing they can display, kind of like you're, you're checking in on Foursquare and you get a badge or something. Um, we do that with commenting. I've had this many comments or this many great comments or I'm a, a powerful commenter. Just these kind of little rewards that, that we see work, um, but I know that it doesn't seem all that meaty. Uh, so those kinds of things I was thinking about, I, my wheels are just spinning about a way to, if we could bring in all of these different ways and make it easy to see what the most recent student published work is from anywhere and what how many comments they have, you know, as a good place to go and if you are wanting to send your students somewhere to read what else is being done or a way to get more information out there, I mean, those are, I know that there's things out there that exist and uh, we just need to make them better and more more prevalent and, and aware mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know it, it, it's, if I'm just, on the track here but yeah, yeah uh, just a technical point to to note for another time perhaps in youth voices there's a um, you, we can pull in pull in other people's blogs to uh -huh. youth voices um, and then it would make it easy for our students to see them they could follow different blogs so there might be a way to make connections that way. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, we have to think about that a little bit. And I, and I love you know. the I love the conversation because this is something that we've been talking a lot about: the open, published conversation or published in a small group. Uh, you know who gets to mm -hmm. read it, and I think this group here is, is way further along than most places in terms of willingness to show let their students be out there in public. Um, and that's a, a fight that we're all fighting, I think, um, because it's we see the authentic voices and power that that has, and and the motivation, if nothing else, for for students to have their work out there in public. And I I, I don't know why I thought of it, but certainly the issue of having an email address is something that we're looking at, Gail, right? <laughs> with um or who is it uh, the issue of having uh, an, uh, elementary for younger having kids an email or? address to, to join youth voices so yeah, I've run into that problem yeah oh okay, okay I forgot so they need an email address to join you yeah. I'll ask you to contact um, and I forget who they are right now can't think of them. Um, the email folks. <laughs> I'll think of them in a second. Anyway, um, the names gaggle or something, right? With the, it's with not gaggle. We oh. did Animoto. Uh huh. And they um and they were they said we could use a Google account and just add a number. So I used mm -hmm. my Google account plus one plus two plus three. It worked. Right. Did that All work for your solutions. site? And I think a lot of teachers do that with edge blogs too, right, Ronnie? If they if they want. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Right. So there are solutions, and I'm excited to invite the younger kids into Youth Voices. I, I, you know, you'll have your own kind of space, but I think that'll work. And the DIY folks, we'll, we'll have to keep working with you and figure out how this works out. <laughs> Anybody want to say, and let's, let's just go around and say, what are you excited about working on with your kids this year um, as, as, it, as it gets started here? And I want to kind of go backwards here and go back to Adam and say, what are you thinking, what are you excited about? As we close off, I'm excited in trying to integrate actually G uh, Google Plus into my class. I'm really hoping really? to wow. connect my because I teach environmental science to high school seniors. So these kids will be out really in the world within ten months. So sure. I really want to try to get them talking to people from around the world, to professionals, to other teachers, other students, and to get them involved in real world issues so that's that's really my goal thank you 
for joining us. Keep joining us, please. Charlie. I hope uh, I hope this gets around our firewall. Uh, I'm ex- uh, I'm curious to see if this will work in our in our the, the DOE building. Uh, I am uh, I'm I'm excited to really try and push the world agenda. Uh, it's something that is so powerful for so few students, and it, and it really the students who have latched onto a, a, a issue that is meaningful to them that is not necessarily connected to their own lives, but just that they have empathy for, has always produced such strong writing, and uh, just uh, it helps them grow so much. So I'm just going to try and really work on ways of broadening the horizon of the students and trying to. Uh, bring in more sort of projects that will force them to sort of consider the larger uh, the connections between what they do in this world and uh, the outcomes for others. And Charlie, what are you teaching this year? This year, uh, it's going to be a couple of things. One, I have a uh, thing, a project um, called Connected Foundations, uh, which is uh, the, I guess it's Verizon. It's some DSL carrier gave a grant, uh, and students, when they complete a course of uh, basic internet media literacy, will qualify for subsidized um, high speed internet and get a refurbished computer. So we'll be using uh, we'll be using uh, a bit of youth voices, mostly I think Edmodo and some other things. I don't quite know what's going on there. Uh, and then uh, there will be not exactly sure yet. We don't start for another month, so I'm on the fence there. May a gaming class might show up as well. I unfortunately put that on the table, not thinking they would accept it. But and there is a photography like, channel. You had a photography teacher who might join us. So yes, that's and so hopefully that mind, that so. will that will happen this year. Oh, good. Um, so so that will come in there too. I generally try and work youth voices into most of the endeavors that I find myself. Cool. Thank you for joining us tonight. Chris, quickly. Thank you. Okay. I'll try to be quick. Um, you know, a lot of what has already been said, um, my students are, maybe because we're kind of an outdoorsy kind of culture around here, are really interested in, in kind of environmental issues like Adam mentioned, and I teach a lot of seniors, and Charlie's notes about, you know, global issues, uh, I think, you know, the key is to choose these collaborative projects that touch everybody. So that's why I was saying earlier, you know, the food kind of stuff, well, everybody has to deal with their food supply system. Uh, in the West, the huge issue of water, you know, so those are issues that, um, you know, I think students all deal with in their own way, and I think we can build some collaborative work around those things that we all share. And photography yeah. does okay. figure into that too, because I teach photography too, and a lot of times the subject of their photography are those same uh, issues that I talked about. Right. Dan, welcome to this community. Hope you come back. Hope we haven't scared you off. <laughs> oh. uh, thank you. This has been wonderful. It's been a great opportunity to connect and hear all of your thinking. But uh, I'm excited for this year because, um, you know, I, I love doing the persuasive writing uh, earlier in the year with the, the letters, but I'm also excited to give them kind of a, more of an audience to interact with, hopefully. Um, and one of the things I'm really looking forward to is using, uh, as, as another publishing piece, we're doing this digital storytelling project where we, the kids create their own images using Microsoft Paint and then they take kind of a couple highlighted pieces of text from their their letters that they create and then create a digital story around that uh, almost like a public service announcement um, and, but using the artwork that they create we did a similar project last year and uh, they it's amazing what kids can do with Microsoft Paint um, they're really talented with it and uh, excited about that so thanks that sounds Really cool. Once you get into Youth Voices, check out the image feature because you can create an easy slideshow now. Um, so that oh, great. you might be able to just set that up right on a post. But um, mm. worth looking at. Thank you for joining us, and we'll, we'll get back to you. Gail, quickly. 
Well, I just jotted down what Chris said, um, collaborative issues that touch us all. Um, I, you know, I think that's a great way to bring kids into a community around authentic issues. I'm sorry, the dogs are <laughs> starting to go crazy here, but, um, but I'm, I'm really excited about the gardening issue, and I know that mm -hmm. I'm going to have some teachers who will definitely want to be on board with that. Um, uh, you know, I'll also be curious if any sites are doing anything with um, the 10-year commemorative on 9-11 uh, also. Yeah, that's happening right away, yeah. Right. Hmm. Good. <laughs> Looking down, I guess, you're, uh, Judy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Judy. That's okay. Last thoughts. Um, um, I, I'm excited this year. I'm starting using NINGS with my students. We had a closed um, system before that just within our district, and so going out actually onto the web is a big step for us. Um, and I may be piloting the, um, some Chromebooks. So uh, we'll see what that, hmm. whether or not that comes through. And then, of course, wow. trying to figure out how the NWP makes uh, initiative works both in my classroom and for the project. Great. Stay in touch. <laughs> good, to see, okay. good to talk to you. Kevin. Uh, well, uh, I think just like last year, I think that environmental theme really kind of uh, the inquiry theme connected through the whole year for my students. And I'm, uh, I'm going to try to kind of keep that going again this year and uh, think about the ways that um, the Youth Voices site can kind of help us, help my students kind of see themselves as writers. Um, and, um, you know, the, we're having a convocation with the, the day before our school kind of begins and a couple of teachers have been asked to speak uh, to the staff and the superintendent picked me to ask about or talk about you know ways that our my students have connected with the world and so I'll be sure to kind of highlight some of the work being done at Youth Voices too and it would be great to have another teacher in my district also involved uh, because I think the collaboration you know can be more powerful uh, when you have local people you can kind of turn to as well. Margaret this doesn't count, by the way. We have to have you back to hear more of what you did up in uh, Washington. But uh. Oh, okay. Well, I think all of you can qualify. So next year, um, I hope everyone um, will apply to the Microsoft Innovative Educating Forum, and we'll all go, and we'll all have a great time. But um, I'm, you know, I've been so pumped up by that experience and being a part of this group. It's um you know, in my small little isolated community. I keep saying that, but, um, you know, there are not a lot of techno-savvy people around, and I, the learning curve around here is huge. When I went to Microsoft, I felt like I had been asleep for 10 years. I didn't know about OneNote, and it's like, oh, my gosh, it's a miracle. So um, being with you all has really um, given me a lot of confidence in just, you know, in my teaching, but also in just going online and chatting in a hangout, you know. So um, I just thank you all for that, and I will well, definitely be tuning back into Youth Voices. It gives my students an audience and a place for them to be published authors and, um, and a community uh, beyond their own community. And um, I know that I do have a student from last year who is still concerned about the Gulf and she still wants to work on this. Um, so that, that issue has not gone away. Um, it, it might need a little more digging to, to actually come up with uh, information about it, but it isn't gone. So, so we'll definitely be um, looking into that again this year. But um, again, I just want to thank the community for l letting me hang out here. It's been great. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and Bert, any, I'm sorry, Ronnie, <laughs> any final thoughts, sir? Well, just to, just to thank you. Uh, it's been wonderful to learn about, about everything here that, that is going on in Youth Voices. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's something that we need to learn about and, and see how we can, uh, you know, get more, more student work out there and more students seeing what other students are doing and, and, and also mm -hmm. connecting up teachers and educators as well so it's, it's been great and thank you all for spending the time here to finish um, we're over time and thank you um, we've been broadcasting we want to say over the EdTech talk 
um, network of the World Bridges Network, channel of the World Bridges Network, can never get it straight. Thanks to Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo. Um, and Jeff has been leading us into this uh, world of Hangouts, too. Um, thank you, Susan, for managing the chat room. And uh, thank you all. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye, Dave. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye